is uh, Congressman Hoffman here yet, by chance? There he is. Yeah! So blessed today to have the words from our Congressman Hoffman. So let's give him a give him a minute here to get up here. Thank you. Uh, I want you to know how important what you're doing is for our country, for the soul of our country today. Um, our ability to come together quickly, to mobilize, to organize, to collectively raise our voices and move the needle of public opinion in this country is the only reason that President Trump is at least somewhat on the defensive right now regarding his terrible family separation policy. So we got to keep this up. Now, I, I will tell you, we're here in a rally to, to fire people up, uh, and I will confess to you that in some ways I feel like a terrible speaker at a rally like this, because this past week, I will confess that I spent a couple of days in the pit of despair. All right? I was feeling a little overwhelmed and a little hopeless about the fact that, despite the fact that my party has won a majority of votes in six of the past seven presidential elections, Despite the fact that the American people are with us on every major issue facing this country, somehow, through a combination of gerrymandering and hardball tactics regarding Supreme Court nominees, and blatant corruption involving the 2016 presidential campaign, somehow, through a combination of these things, the Republican Party is in control of all three branches of the United States government, and they're doing some terrible things to this country. And so the resignation of Justice Kennedy hit me like a ton of bricks, and I will confess to all of you, I spent a couple of days wallowing a bit in the pit of despair. <laughs> If, if I can snap out of it and get back into the fight on the front lines of the swamp of Washington, D.C., maybe I can contribute to this, too. And I know that if all of you care enough about it to come here to this rally and to join your voices with millions of people around this country today at similar rallies, then this fight is not hopeless. We should not be overwhelmed. This is a fight we're going to win. So thank you. Now, uh, we have each got a job to do. I've certainly got a job to do back in Washington, and you've got a job to do as engaged citizens in this country, and perhaps we can draw some strength from each other. We do this because we know that there are some things that are just true, okay? They cut across partisan lines, and regional lines and racial and ethnic lines. They even cut through the fog of disinformation that's constantly put forward by the Trump administration. And I'll tell you one of those things that's just true. Forcibly taking babies from their parents and putting kids in cages is wrong. We know it. We know that. We know it in our hearts and in our brains that it's just wrong. Even when Jeff Sessions and Sarah Sanders tells us it's biblical. We know it's wrong. It's also wrong to keep families detained indefinitely in prison-style internment camps. And let me tell you, that's the next stage of this fight. That's the fight we're going to have to focus on right now, because that's the next thing President Trump wants to do. He wants to bring back these prison-style internment camps, reminiscent of the Japanese internment that was one of the darkest stains in our country's history. And we're going to have to fight against that while we're working to reunify kids with their parents, thousands of them, uh, who've already been separated and are currently 
being detained. Now, uh, we all know we have a mixed history in this country when it comes to immigrants. We haven't always gotten it right. We've got some dark chapters in our country's history, but most people agree with us that immigration is a good thing and that embracing immigrants, many of whom come from horrific violence, some of the most war-torn places in the world, that embracing them and taking them in, giving refugees and asylees a chance to make their case, uh, that's something that makes our country great. And most people agree with us. One other thing that makes our country great is our historical commitment to human rights in due process. And that's why, it's partly why, our country has had so much credibility and moral authority in the world community for decades. Now, President Trump is trying to take us backward on all of these things in some terrible ways that we have to fight against. He's doing it by denigrating and dehumanizing immigrants. He's doing it with his hateful rhetoric and policies. He's trivializing human rights as a core value in American foreign policy. And the world is watching as he does these things, as he forcibly separates babies from their parents to send a message to people in other countries. How cynical is that? As he closes ports of entries for asylum seekers, forcing them to cross the borders in other ways and risk prosecution under his uh, draconian New Zero tolerance policy. As he trivializes domestic violence as a private matter in denying asylum to thousands of domestic violence victims, as he prepares to move families into these prison-style internment camps, and as he constantly moves the goalpost for hundreds of thousands of young people who are DACA registrants and who deserve our protection against deportation. Yeah. So all of this, all of this is terribly, dreadfully wrong, and we are not going to stand for it. I want to promise you that I'm going to keep up this fight in Congress, and I know that you are going to keep pushing too. My offices, I want you to know, have been receiving thousands of phone calls and emails opposing this family separation policy. And I've talked to my colleagues from around the country, and they too tell me that there is an unprecedented level of citizen engagement on these issues right now. And you can bet that President Trump is hearing it from the people of the United States too. That is what it's going to take. We are going to have to make sure that we keep it up. So I want you to stay engaged. I want you to stay fired up, be vigilant, be organized, be ready to mobilize quickly. And let's remember that we are fighting this fight for people that are too vulnerable to fight for themselves right now. And we're also fighting, let's remember this, for the soul of our country, because we are a better country than what we have seen in our voters for the past few months. So I want to close by reminding you and myself of something very important, and that is that despair doesn't change a damn thing in this country. It never has. Okay? We have got to stay positive. We've got to stay in this fight. This rally hundreds of other rallies like it all over this country. The marches, the protests, the millions of calls, the petitions, and ultimately the most important march of all, the march to the polls this yeah. November. These are the things that are gonna change our country, that are gonna preserve the soul of our country. So thank you for having me, thank you for being here. Let's keep this up all the way through November and beyond. Thank you, Congressman Austin. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Have a hand on it. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman.